now here in New York, Dr. J. Buzz von Ornsteiner is a forensic psychologist and another frequent guest here on Open Court. Buzz, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, let me start with you, Dr. Yeah. Buzz. What do you hear in this tape? Well, he's, he's going through it in his mind and then he's venting to her all these possibilities and he's processing what he's taking with that. What he doesn't mention is oftentimes when men have been rejected or men are depressed or men are being denied what they want, they don't necessarily go into isolation. They act out that depression. They seek revenge. They engage in high-risk behaviors. They self-medicate. They don't necessarily deal well with the, the depression. They don't deal well with the re rejection. They then engage in action-oriented behavior, which could lead to murder. He's leaving that out of the game plan. He's trying to look at everyone else except himself. And, and in actuality, it sounds fairly convincing to me on that phone tape. Yeah, it does sound convincing. It's very hard, and I think that's why the jury is so hung up in this case. And when you take that together with Michelle Zamitti's testimony that he was a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of personality, sweet and nice most of the time, but boy, he had this mean streak. What does that say to you? Well, it says he's a real louse. He's a habitual liar. He's not credible. He's not trustworthy. He goes around his life lying. We know that. We know he's a habitual liar and he's lied all through his life. He lied during all of this. How else could you write a letter to the family that are going through grief and then adding more grief and more burden to try to sway the police from yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, it's such a cruel thing to do. If you Not want to nice throw guy. the police off your trail, there might be ways of doing it, like writing a letter directly to the police that doesn't inflict this kind of agony on the family. I mean, good grief. Can you imagine worrying that your grandchildren might be the next one to get hit? I mean, it's a horrendous thing to do. Dr. Buzz, is there some kind of psychological condition underlying this man? Well, you know, we all think the worst of people, but this guy's had a pretty bad history. And of course, we would want to look at personality and temperament. We'd want to see if he really has an antisocial personality, but his background is not particularly criminal laden. He doesn't seem to have a, a criminal history. That's true, but let me add one yeah, thing. Okay. There was an ex girlfriend who got a temporary restraining order against him. The jury doesn't know that, but we okay. know that when she tried to break up with him, she felt that he was threatening. How does that affect this? Well, you know, he is a user and an exploiter of women. He is a corrupter. He may be a confirmed bachelor, but he spent his life using and abusing women. In fact, the witness who claims to have seen him at 10 o'clock, he says she saw him at 930. Yes. He started sleeping with her daughter. Yeah. So he uses his sexuality to try to get what he <laughs> wants from people. He's yes. the corrupter. He's the abuser. He's the habitual liar. Yeah. Not a nice guy. Well, you're right, Dr. Buzz. Yeah. Thanks also to our guests here in studio, Dr. J. Buzz von Ornsteiner.